Wow, I just realized that there is this timer here. It gives me great pleasure to be here, to um, gather with some old friends and some new friends. Really happy to be here. So today I'm going to try to use this not very good Mandarin of mine to share with you this case of design of Budweiser. But let me first share with you what JKR is. Um, JKR might be something new to you. You may not have heard of JKR, the company. Actually, JKR is very much related to the theme of food and beverage. Well, yeah, this is an ever changing word, so it's fine with me. Actually, JKR was first founded in the UK and we are very much into the food and beverage package and design industry, um, in particular fast consuming industry. These are some samples of our um, designs and we've also been doing the same thing here in Shanghai. So JKR represents for Jon Snow's Richie. The three co-founders who were yeah, still at their prime of a prime age, twenty something, in the UK. These are their names. So three young men at that time. They never um, realized how this, you know, JKR, how successful this brand is going to become. Um, last year in Shanghai, JKR expanded into JKR Renee and Yolanda. I'm Renee. Well, I'm a creative person and I'm running my own office here in Shanghai. Yolanda cannot make it to here today because she has to work, obviously. JKR is very much focused on designing. 26 years ago, we started in London. And then we expanded to New York and Singapore and then we came to Shanghai. So the Shanghai office is just it just has just celebrated this one year birthday. We've got this strong faith in design because we believe it's an uh, age of design. So we have our strong faith in design. The reason we believe in design beca is because we believe that um, each brand, in order to be attractive, lies in design. So if you think you are a thought leader today, and if you want to make become a market leader, you could do that by uh, investing in design, by focusing in design. So this is um, what but wiser looks like from the top. So we are really, you, you see, the devil is really in the details. You see, it's, it's really about the details. Um, today is the crossover of New, uh, this is something uh, co-designed by New York office and Shanghai office because I did this when I was in New York office. And today when I'm sharing with you, I'm here in Shanghai. So any one of you is a consumer of Budweiser, Budweiser any consumers of Budweiser here, any fans? Uh, personally, I'm not a beer, person because it will make me fat. But Wiser is 140 years old as a brand. And today I'm going to share with you how it boldly, um, let's say, reinvented or redesigned itself so that it's rejuvenated. But in case you don't know, But Wiser is a American icon. It's 140 years, so it's almost as old as the country itself. It's very much American. It's very, very old. It's an iconic brand. And it's a very macro or democratic icon. Everybody consumes it. Um, the U.S. people, if, if you ever watch those soap opera, 
those TV series. You see, uh, when people open the refrigerator, it's filled with bottles of beers. So this is、um, heavily consumed by household. So it's really a household product. And brand, and they are very much focused on the quality,、um, which directly feed into our design. Because Budweiser, they really care about the recipe. They really care about、um, the recipe, which stayed the same for 140 years. So they are really、um, perseverant in、um, brewing their beer. They use this. They've been using the same kind of wood to brew the beer, and they are really focused on quality. So, as you have heard a lot about American spirit, they focus on freedom, authenticity, and ambition. So, a brand has this spirit. So.、Um, They、uh, want to live this life of dreams. So、um, our design is、um, pet world winner. So look at this aluminum bottle in my hand. Have you ever seen that in commercials? Good. So let me share with you this、um, how we became the pet world winner. At the same time, I would like to tell the entire story. <laughs> um, just bear with me for one minute to tell this story. I need to tell the other story. So these two stories actually go hand in hand.、Um, when we re re received the brief,、um, it was on the one on the left hand. It was our first brief. We were told that we have to repack. Or redesign the、um, Budweiser packaging on a global basis, but it's difficult because it's sold in many countries in the U.S., in China, in Brazil, in Brazil, in Canada, in many countries. So all these countries are selling the same kind of products. Um, with different packages and、um, teams in different countries argued how to proceed, but people,、uh, but wiser in the U.S. decided not to wait because for ten years they've been experiencing constant declining in its market share. So the but wiser U.S. talked to me. Just forget about the global design. Let's make the move first. Can we just start with this aluminum bottle as a catalyst for the change? So, so this is how we started. But wiser, having lived for 140 years, is already、uh, was already outdated. It was not identified by young people in the states. So a challenge at that time was how to、um, attract those young people and make them identify themselves with this but wiser beer. Um, make them feel proud when holding a can of the beer in their hands. So our goal was to create something fresh and relevant. Well, there were many things we could do. We could do something really、uh, extravagant, but、um, we didn't do that. We did、uh, limited edition. But we make it really relevant to the brand itself and to the consumers in the market. So this is a, a limited edition that you're looking at. How do we do that? First, we need to identify、um, all, all our creative people went to this Budweiser office in the states. And we look into its history to identify what is so unique about Budweiser. What、um, is so unique 
Is it? It's I can't. Is it? It's. We we looked into depth about uh, for Budweiser's icon, and we decided it's this label that's so unique about Budweiser. It's this label that people remember most about Budweiser. For 140 years, this label has been changing. Um, however, it's mostly the same, and it's what people remember most about Budweiser. And then we started to craft. In Chinese, uh, craft uh, contains a lot of uh, craftsmanship and manual work. Why did we do that? We know that these people at Budweiser are really serious about the work that they do. They are zero tolerance to mistakes or errors, and we think we we should. Um, do this by manual painting, crafting. Only by this could we match the seriousness that the Budweiser is put into um, brewing. So you could see this comparison here. We manually sketched and drew this um, icon, this label. So we first identified and then crafted. And then um, we tried to strike a balance between the old and the new. We didn't want something extravagant to just attract eye, uh, eyebrows. We um, we wanted to something that's really relevant. So this is something that you see today. So that's the balance that we're trying to reach between the old days and the new days. So that's what we say. The first winner of our final design. So this lasts in every aspect of the as of the product. So it was very successful. It was very well received among youngsters. They felt that uh, they could identify themselves with Budweiser. So why did we succeed? So first of all. We're trying to make it recognize、uh, special, but it's still very recognizable. That's the first thing. And second, because we did this、uh, manually, so it's craft, and that helped us to win the award. And then, this is a new and modern, but we keep the classic element of it. So. That's why this one is successful. But we're not done yet. At the very beginning, I told you that this project didn't exist at all. It was a, a global redesigning project. So after this project, then what happened to global redesign? The global. Saw the successful story of、uh, the U.S. They got excited. They said, "Wow, it's time for us to do the same thing. We need to copy what the U.S. did. Let's do that." And then, in the 140 years, we had the 13 redesign. But this one is very different. This is the first time in the world that、uh, this is done globally. So this is a very bold action. Now let me share with you some video. We arrived with nothing and built an empire. We drove culture and permeated the world around us. We were America's beer. Our enemies wanted a piece of what was ours. So ask yourself: When your throne is under threat, what's a king to do? Take back your crown.
Very, very 激动，对不对 ？Very excited. It's really amazing. So that's really exciting, right? So we didn't make big changes. That was a gradual process. First of all, we want to reduce things. We know that in this world, you need to do reduction rather than addition. Reduction will give you the premium simplicity. We try to reduce, but a lot of the time, customers are asking us to add things. But when you see this, you will know that reduction will give you the simplicity. So if you change that, it's easier for customers to recognize it. So that is how we reduce. The redundant things. We did more changes here. We remove the crown. We remove the shades. And another very important thing is the craftsmanship. We talked about this. We need to capture the spirit of the brand. So where is the spirit of the brand? Consistency in its、um, recipe. That's something we need to put on the design. So we need to enlarge the part that want we want to show, and we need to then minimize other things. So this brand shows the American spirit. So what we do when we create this, we create the typeface for these、um, brand. This typography is specially designed for the brand. We made it bold. We want to echo other things about this product. So, for photography, because this brand is so authentic, we don't allow any unprofessional photography for this one. We want to show the authenticity of it. And then you put all the things together. You have a very unified style of posters to show American spirit. Of course, because of the package, you need to think about other things. For example, for the cane, the emblem was enlarged by. Large part, and now it's very、um, eye-catching. And the reduction made it truly premium. So that's it. Lastly, I would ask this question. Many other people also, I also ask a question: Why go through all the trouble? Of shutting down brewers, you know it takes a lot of money to do that. So why a brand is so brave to do something like this? So the marketing VP said that、uh, because we want change. So when we look at the positioning of the brand, is brew the hard way. So when we do this beer, we did this very carefully. If we do it so carefully, so consistently, then our package, our label, does it show that? No. The answer was no. So, so VP of North America said that.、Uh, of course, now he's a global executive, Budweiser. So, lastly, through design, it's an ultimate media for the brand. 
So we were able to change this iconic brand, a new life, to make it reshine, to come back to where it used to be, and it truly go back to the U.S. icon. Thank you very much. This is a, a case that we would like to share with you, Budweiser. Thank you very much. So, every brand, if it changes package, it's a big challenge because they don't know whether the customers would accept it, so whether the sales would increase. So after a change uh, package, did the volume goes up? The reason why we do not have uh, answers is that this just launched in the past two months, so we haven't got the statistics yet. However, in the special edition, it has a very, very big, significant raise, but I do not have the number for you. So when you got this out, you do market survey. So in this process, what's the satisfaction rate of uh, customers in this new design? I will say the acceptance is very, very high because this change, you know, it's not a complete change. This is still relevant change. It's relevant to its brand, it's relevant to the customers. So we try to reach a balance there. So that's why. So I have a question. You know, normally when we change package, we do not, we do not do consumer. We will do consumer test. So. Uh, normally, we will look at overall liking and position intent. So, when you were doing this, what are the measurements for you to make the decision? Honestly, I don't really know because I think these are all the basic measurements. There won't be any creative uh, measures. So first of all, thank you so much for your sharing. Seeing from your sharing, we totally see the power of design. And you also art articulate your process. So that's what interesting point you know you shared with us the three insights. I would say they are very accurate. But you didn't go through the process. So from the designer's perspective, so how did you get these three points? What I think that uh, we try to identify the label as the most important element. This might not be complete intuitive. But we go through a detailed historical process to try to find out uh, that uh, these are the things that are important. Simultaneously, we also did uh, research to support it. Uh, some people opposed to the um, design, but uh, we judging from history, from our intuitive feeling, we know that uh, you, you could not see this, the craftsmanship in this bow tie. So this label would not be really representative. So you know, the label is a great way to demonstrate craftsmanship. Therefore, we change 
that part. So that's why I would say you made a great point. You know, some go uh, really the good design. You don't have to go through too much research. So a lot of time, it's more, you know, imperative for you to go designing. Thank you very much for your presentation. I particularly enjoyed it because I'm American and uh, I'm part of the generation that I think Budweiser is trying to target right now because it, uh, the brand I think kind of uh, lost a lot of its momentum um, when people in my generation were starting to discover beer and there's been a quite a large uh, shift in the U United States um, from kind of a large scale beer consumption that um, Budweiser promotes like macro to more of a micro uh, craft brew, craft uh, beer type of culture where the focus is often on uh, flavor. So what, my question for you is um, whether or not the beer's flavor profile influenced the label redesign process at all. You, I think you did a very good job showing how the development process was integrated and how it aligns with certain elements of American culture. But uh, did you also have a discussion about how, what sort of messages you wanted to convey about the beer's flavor during your talks about the label? Um, we, uh, we weren't really very, uh, you know, take the flavor part as a very important point for our redesign. Um, we are more focusing on, you know, the actual, um, uh, 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 the actual uh, the beer making um, as a as a as a ground, but not particularly in the flavor part. Um, so we have not, and I actually don't think you know. Sometimes you you need to, uh, as we said, you need to have the uh, boldness to actually you know, get away something that you don't want to mess up with and you focus into something that you just want to say. So I, I think uh, that's how we get here without, you know, really focusing on the flavor part. Thank you very much. Yes, a short question from my side. Uh, was you involved in, in the brand name as well? Because uh, if you say it's a global uh, project, uh, Budweiser in Europe is not allowed to use, so in Europe you call the beer Bud, because Budweiser, there is a brewery in Budva, in Czech, using this name and has the brand right for this name in Europe. So you cannot sell the bottle uh, from Anheuser-Busch in, in Europe under the name Budweiser, because it is another beer already existing since six, seven hundred years. Uh, why did you not use BAT as a global name for this, or was it not a uh, topic for you? Is it uh, coming from your client? Um, yeah, uh, we, I think uh, there is a BAT light uh, uh, in, in the States as well, uh, everywhere basically. Um, um, I, I really don't know if I can answer a question um, on this part, I'm so sorry, but I think... Uh, you know, it, there is nothing about naming, verbal, things like that at all. Okay, no problem. Well, thank you. Um, I'm not a design person, but I'm really interested in designing. I think design is something that would really define the success of a product. You said that um, you focused on um, the label and you, you, you minus many unnecessary details but um, you have also uh, focused on many details for instance you have placed the uh, crown on the top of the can so yeah the devil I think in the details the devil is in the details could you just go into more details well there are many details uh, so many that I don't know where to start you know, if you look at this bottle on this tactile, uh, if you just go outside and check on the table, for example, 
We, this is a limited edition. Um, we try to use its bow tie um, in many small places. So overall, I mean, I, I cannot um, just take you into every details, but if you just grab one can in your hand, just uh, look at it a little bit, you would realize all these details. And when we uh, we develop, um, there is this. Uh, when we when we develop font, we used those very thick bold font. So we put a lot of uh, details, unique details in that font as well. So it's a lot of places of details. I, I cannot go into all those details. Um, I, I follow a question. Well, I'm a technical person, so I don't know how you think that te uh, technical work can be combined with design. So maybe um, how we could do some functional designs. Um, it's more than visualize some effects. Um, how when you design, how could you? I'll combine that with the technical side or functional side of uh, the product. Well, it's something for me. It's something that I have to improve. I'm a design person, and I do believe this is an area that all the designers need to work harder in. Um, sometimes I I feel I feel that if we really have the passion to. Uh, design every product well, we need to improve the functional side of the design. I don't think I'm doing a great job there yet. Thanks. Any questions? Well, a uh, warm applause for Renee for that wonderful representation. Thank you.